In the last video, we looked at the classic exponential discount formula e to the negative rt. This is the same formula as that we use for radioactive decay. It intersects the y-axis at 1 because there is no discount factor for a, uh, a present payment and then it monotonically declines asymptotically approaching infinity at time equal to 0. This is a logical discount factor in the sense that the difference between, remember I said it was the same one as uh, radioactive decay, the difference between this amount and this amount proportionally over some interval, we'll call this interval delta t, is going to be the exact same proportionally as this delta t. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's say for the sake of the argument, we're not to scale here, that this discount factor is 0 0.5 and that this discount factor is 0 0.25. In radioactive decay, we would call that a half-life. At this point, the radioactive isotope is emitting one-half the radiation as it did at this point in time. So we'll call this T1, T0, T2. And over every interval delta T called the half-life, the radioactive decay is one-half what it was in the previous time. So exponential discounting is time insensitive. Wherever you look, you, you could say, oh, I'll just start right here. And sure enough, after time delta t, you would be having, relative to where you started, the discount factor. So both radioactive decay and the exponential discount uh, factor work this way. We know that the present value of any future payment we'll call A, and I'm going to call this A1 or A2 or A A to the N. So this is the present value of any one of these payments that we have to discount at this time is going to be E to the negative R T N. Now we criticized this approach because we said very long-term events don't wind up worth much. And there are certain environmental problems that have very long lead times. And if we apply a financial discount factor to an environmental problem with a long lead time, then there would be no rationale by which we would make significant sacrifices today for benefits that don't show up until several generations later. We said in the previous video, this is the problem of intergenerational equity. Remember, the discount rate and that is expressed here is an expression of time preference. Do we want our benefits now or are we willing to be patient to wait until later? And when we use exponential discounting then it, we would have an extraordinarily low discount rate that doesn't correspond to our financial opportunity costs at all in order to justify waiting several generations. I use the example of 200 years. We could use the example of 100 years. So I said in this video what I'd show you an alternative way of looking at it. As a matter of fact, e to the negative rt is not the only way that you could reasonably expect to discount future events. Let's look at another function. And that function would have a shape like this. Again, we're subject to intersecting the y-axis at 1 and monotonically declining and at time equal to 0 being 0, asymptotically approaching 0. So we could have a different form of the function that meets the exact same constraints and this form is called the hyperbolic discount factor formula. Now I, a here is a new constant. I've used lowercase a instead of uppercase a. Instead of using rt, I'm using at. And I want to differentiate that because this, again, I mean, it does calibrate the curve. It is an expression of time preference, but it's a different form of the function. And so just so that we don't confuse this calibration constant with this one, I've changed the variable. The hyperbolic winds up discounting more than the exponential at first, and less than the exponential for very long-term events. If you recall two videos ago, we integrated the area under this 
exponential curve, and we found out that it was finite. The integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative rt dt was 1 over r, which for any positive finite value of r is going to be finite. Well, it turns out if we integrate the hyperbolic discount factor formula from, again, 0 to infinity, this time we get infinity. I'll discuss the implications of that in the next video.